right now. Listen up. Three, two, one. It's showtime. That's great. This is ridiculous. 99.3 The Truth. You can't handle the truth right now. Ooh. That was the stupidest thing I ever heard. Let's do it. Hit it. It's time for Max World. And here we go. Everybody here. Everybody here. Let's get it started. Call Matt, 244-0077, or text 809-0993. It's showtime, everybody! Showtime! Exclusively on 99.3 The Truth. Six minutes after four o'clock on the 11th day of the seventh month in the Lord's second millennium in 2016. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is Max World Live on a Monday afternoon, and as always... Uh, we I, we want to update you on a news story before we get too far because there has been a shooting in Michigan of a uh, deputy sheriff and two bailiffs and the shooter have all been uh, killed. Right. From what I see here on Fox News, two court bailiffs were killed and a police officer shot inside a Michigan courthouse when an inmate broke loose and got his hands on a deputy's gun before he was also killed. All right, so this doesn't have anything to do with the Black Lives Matters. I don't think so. As far as we know. Okay, all right. Well, there will be... I'm just telling you, we're heading to Cleveland here. A week from uh, this Wednesday or Thursday, your television will start lighting up at night, and we'll be live in Cleveland from the Republican National Convention. And I don't really understand the mentality of uh, people who, who... it's like it's the Black Lives Matter people. I'm sorry if that sounds bad. I just I know what their mentality is. Their mentality is they're going to use their race and they're going to use statistics and narratives that don't have anything to do with the truth just to, you know, climb on the back of somebody else to make them be able to stand up and look taller. That's all it is. And they're going to come all unglued uh, in Cleveland here in a couple of weeks. And it's going to be there's going to be some there's going to be some moms and dads that bury some kids after that and that's just do so you, wrong do you, so are you saying you think there will be some people over there showing their rear in cleveland showing their rear yeah you mean i mean there's a there's a nastier word for that but that's the polite word oh just sh- i showing yeah. their rear that they're that they yeah that they are that they act that way right yeah yeah there will be all right all right um guys you'll be happy to know uh, the man uh, most likely to retire with uh, billions and billions of dollars is not Frank. <laughs> and so given that uh, Frank has uh, uh, little knowledge, and I'm not slamming him, it's just the way it is in this world, uh, <laughs> I've asked him over the last week to put together some questions about retirement because I think he's probably coming from a place where uh, I know I come from. Um, um, whether I have substance or not, I don't know anything about retirement. I didn't even think about it. That was going to be all taken care of by, you know, other people. So, um, uh, we do have the phone lines open at two, four, four, double O double seven. We've got the, uh, 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 service legends. No. Yes. Service legends, truth text line at five, one, five, eight, oh, nine, zero, nine, nine, three. And you can text a question. You can call in a question. You can just call and tell Jebediah, what the question is, and he can uh, answer it for, or he won't, but he can get it on the radio and ask you. Uh, And then we also have Frank here with a a good list of questions. Now, what we've got here is we've got a passport to retirement. It's coming up a week from tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep. Week from tomorrow, Tuesday, July 19th, 6 to 9 p.m. at Upper Iowa University. And this is free legal advice. Or, I'm sorry, free financial advice. And who doesn't like free financial advice? Who doesn't like free advice? Okay, well, maybe from some people you don't want it, whether it's paid for or not. But free uh, retirement advice, financial advice, that, that's what this is. But you need to come to the seminar. You need to come and listen to the context of the beginning and the end and how it impacts you. Uh, the tickets are regularly $49 for two people. I'll give those to you if you want. 515 278 um, 4111, 4110. 10. 4110 is the number you can call over at uh, uh, Weiss Merkel, or you can call us here at 515 
244-0077 and uh, ask your questions that way or just get signed up with some free tickets for the uh, seminar Passport to Retirement coming up next Tuesday. All right, throw one of your questions at him, Frank. Well, let me start by a quote that oh, I found nice. on the internet today that was I thought was interesting. This is going to get good really quick, isn't it, Frank? Well, tell me who, <laughs> tell me who you might think slapped this quote down. If you work hard, you can break barriers. That would be Kim Kardashian. <laughs> this is going to be better than I thought. <laughs> okay, here's a here's a here's a question. Um, what you know? How, what percent of people who retire uh, find out later that they have the need to go back to work? And how would you counsel people? When you counsel them about that, how do they plan for that? Well, here, here's what I can tell you, Frank. Here, here's something else that you can you can Google. Google uh, how many baby boomers are retiring every single day. You're going to come up with a number somewhere around ten thousand baby a boomers day? are retiring every single day, and that's going to take place for the next fifteen to twenty years. And I was one of them. The, the most recent retirement confidence survey says that 22% of these retirees feel very confident going into retirement. 22%. So what that tells me is that there's 7,800 <laughs> baby boomers retiring every single day who are less than very confident about being successful in retirement. And what I can tell you is that the, right now, what you guys were talking about prior, prior to the show is the market, or the new segment said the market, uh, the S&P 500 reached an all-time high which it did, and this market has been doing very, very well for the last eight years. What we do know is this cycle cannot continue forever. And the last time we went through a devastating market cycle was in 2008. And many people had to come out of retirement because of the amount of money they lost in 2008. Many people couldn't retire the way they wanted to retire based on what took place in 2008. And so what, what we do, what's important for pre-retirees and retirees to understand is they do not have to go through that. And the only way to not subject yourself to that type of loss is to understand how much, how much would your portfolio react in a negative way if or when this market turns around. And if you get a good grasp on how your portfolio will react, one of two outcomes is gonna take place. One is you're gonna be comfortable with that conclusion, with that output. Or two is you're going to be uncomfortable with the realization that you might lose 40% of your portfolio. And if you are uncomfortable with what you learn, now you have a chance. Now you have a chance to be proactive to make changes prior to this market turning around. So you do not have to endure what many, many pre-retirees and retirees endured in 2008. We're with uh, James Weiss and Lauren Merkel with Weiss Merkel talking about the passport to retirement. It is coming up a week from tomorrow, Tuesday, July 19th from 6 to 9 p.m. Upper Iowa University, which I believe is at 60th and uh, it's 50th, 50th, yeah, 50th, and, 50th on, on West Town Parkway. Right. OK, there we go. Um you sent me some information over today that I thought was interesting that most of the time when a 401k is just rolled over from one employer to another, that changes are not made to that for two years? Yeah, there was a study that was out there that the average 401k uh, participant hasn't made any investment changes in the last two years. So that means they basically have been staying the course with exactly the same investments or what we're seeing a lot of in today's times is there's a lot of employers, especially in town here, that are changing plans every two years. So they're going from one provider to the next provider, for example, like from Fidelity to Vanguard, from Vanguard to TD Ameritrade. You know, every time they change that employer, the employer does what they do, um, a mirroring. So what they do is they match like investments for the exact same like investment. So for example, if you were in a lifetime 2020 fund, they're going to move and mirror that over to a lifetime 2020 fund at the new plan provider. And, you know, one of the things about getting close to retirement is a lot of times you should be like what Lauren was talking about earlier. You know, how do you prevent yourself from running out of money is not making sure that you have so much risk when it gets close to maybe five or 10 years within retirement. And when you match over to that, I'm, I'm most of my analysis says that 
those fees change. And so if you don't know what those fees change by, that's another one of those drags that, that hurt people long term. Uh, there was a study out there, if we added up the fees in the 401ks, you know, that they're eating up over 40% over a 20-year span inside 401ks due to these additional fees that are hidden inside 401k. Uh, matter of fact, there was a, uh, a, a study out there by 60 Minutes. I would say, uh, if you don't believe me on the fees, Google that 60 Minute episode that they did on hidden fees of 401ks. There's about a 10 minute clip out there that really demonstrated all of the different layers and layers and layers of fees that are built inside these. So one of the things that we advocate is every time you get a notice from your employer that they're changing the employer plan, sit down with your financial advisor, understand what that paperwork is, because the first thing that letter says is we're going to automatically do this unless we hear different from you. So they take the, they take the approach of we're going to notify and it's up to the participant to take action. And, and what I see is a lot of people just say, that's too much information. I don't want to try and understand all of that. I, I'll just let them do what they're going to do. And I think that hurts people. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd want to know what my changes and my fees were because, I mean, that's an easy way to rip me off. Oh, well, we've got a, a change of uh, transfer fee for this uh, set of money. And then, well, it goes up a half a point on this set of money because it's more. And, you know, after a while, my eyes just cross. Right. And I say, well, I trust these guys, so I guess it's going to be okay. Now, you guys are trustworthy. Um, there's people out there in every industry that aren't trustworthy. And so uh, we need to make sure that we understand, you know, those fees when stuff get rolled over. And, and, and I think to your point, too, Mac, I mean, people think they don't have control to do anything. And, and today, if you're over 59 and a half, you can take that control back. Yeah. I want to hear, find out why. OK. And how in a minute. All right. Uh, 18 minutes after four, Weiss Merkel Financial, James and Lauren in the building to answer your questions at 515-244-0077 or text them at two five or at uh, 809-0993. We're coming back. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. (laughs) 
Lockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 21 minutes after 4, 421 in the afternoon. J. Michael McCoy on a Monday. Oh, what a hot one out there. It is, it is, it is. Supposed to get cooler uh, later on this week, but still hot. And, you know, that's what the conversation on retirement is right now. It's hot. The, the, the government continues to change things. Uh, there are more fees being put in from uh, less scrupulous uh, financial planners. I mean, they make their money on the fees. And you, the only way you can trust them is if you know what those fees are up front and you know when they're going to change. And James was saying earlier that when people roll over their 401ks from one uh, employer to the next, many times they'll sit idle for 24 months. And they'll send the letter, if you want us to do anything, let us know. Otherwise, here's what we're going to do. And then they just change things, and they change rates and fees. It's not the way they work at Weiss Merkel Financial. You, you, you need to check them out. Uh, they're coming up next Tuesday, not tomorrow, but the one after that. Tuesday, July 19th, 6 to 9 o'clock at night with a uh, passport to retirement. And it's absolutely free if you call us, and we'll get you some tickets to uh, 4-4-0-0-7. It's, it's free financial advice that they believe that once you hear uh, how they can help you and, and guarantee a little bit of safety uh, in your retirement that you'll want to do business with them. So what do they do? They start out by telling you everything they know. Why not? Right? They want you, you, they want you to trust them. So the best way to trust them is for them to tell you what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, when they're going to do it, and why they're going to do it. Rather than just, you know, here's the carrot. Well, give me your money, and then I'll tell you how I'm going to do this. That's not the way they work. But if you want to find out how they do work, uh, dates and times, Tuesday, July 19th, 6 to 9 o'clock at night at Upper Iowa University. It's absolutely free. It's the passport to retirement for Weiss Markle. Um, I have a couple questions here. I have one question about married couples, and I have a question about divorced couples. Okay. Uh, the married couple question would be... Obviously, you're you're married. You're getting into your fifties, potentially sixties. What what considerations and factors do you do you factor in? What advice would you give to what you need married together, and potentially what happens if you end up widowed? Okay, from from getting prepared for thinking about maybe retiring in the next ten years, well, Frank. The amount of money you would need to, to, to operate your household, obviously you would need more if you was married. There would probably be a larger grocery bill, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Do you give advice? We, we I mean, do, do you, do you we, make people aware that the reality of, well, one of you may die, health considerations, et cetera, so you can't yeah. necessarily plan on you're going to live out this exact retirement day for day? Yeah. Hour for hour. Yeah, that's a great question, Frank. And this is what we talk about at this at this class at Upper Iowa University is is as how do you build a retirement roadmap that's customized to your situation? Because some people are single and they don't have an, uh, somebody else to take into consideration, and many people are married, and the odds of a married couple passing at the same time is very slim. Right. So the realities are, if you are married, one of one survivor is going to be around. And the plan, the planning process is different. It's for this income while you're both around. And then what happens when one of the, one of the people pass on, how is the, the survivor going to continue to make it? And then here's the other tricky thing is that when that's, when the lone survivor finally passes, what happens to the resources that are still remaining? But you would counsel them on that reality. Oh, absolutely. That's that's something that's absolutely pivotal that needs to be taken in, into consideration in their plan. Okay. Well, on the divorce question, uh, you know, uh, many people get into unequally yoked marriages where there's a housewife, house husband, et cetera, et cetera. And they didn't have no real 
you know, earning power, but they they married and they filed joint returns all the years that they were married. How many years do you have to be married to potentially go back on an ex to draw off of their Social Security? Yeah, if you're talking about Social Security benefits uh, specifically, that's 10 years. So as long as you were married for at least 10 years, uh, you'll be able to use uh, your ex-spousal benefits potentially when it comes time to electing Social Security benefits. And there can be more than one ex-spouse, too, on the same... Oh, really? Earner, yeah, on the higher wage earning. So, you know, maybe somebody was married to them for the first uh, 10 years between, you know, 21 and 31, and then they remarried to somebody else between 35 and 45. There can be multiple spouses on the same uh, higher wage earnings. You know, if the person that was the higher wage earning, they can have more than one ex-spouse on that same earnings record from the, from a Social Security standpoint. The other spouse does not know about it. So there's no... There's no, you know, it's it's purely a mathematical calculation to say who's got the higher benefit, your benefit or your ex-spousal benefit is what we're looking at. So the ex wouldn't know you was drawing Social Security necessarily off of that. That's correct. <clears throat> they let, ha- we'd have no idea. And, and let me give you a specific example, because I think this will kind of highlight the power that's embedded within what you're trying to trying to ask. And we'll just we'll just uh, say this. This individual's name is Mary. OK, OK. So Mary, when we were just talking with her two weeks ago, Mary has two ex spouses. She's currently single. She was married to both of them for longer than 10 years. One has passed and one is still alive. So she really has three benefits that she can choose from her own benefit her survivorship benefit from one of her exes, and then her uh, ex-spouse benefit of the one who's still alive. And so what she ended up doing is she took the survivorship benefit from her deceased ex-spouse all the way up until she was of full retirement age, and then she turned over to her benefit because her benefit was higher. So you can only claim one, and you can determine you can determine which one would benefit you the most. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's as the whole part of that's the whole part of the Social Security plan. And you have up to eighty-one different options of how you can elect. And what we're talking about is just a handful of these options. And, and part of the power that's embedded within these options is you get to choose. You get you get to choose if you know the right questions to ask. Here's the thing: the Social Security Administration is not going to give this out as free advice. <laughs> sure, I mean, yeah. they're not they're if you call them and say, "Hey, what's my best option?" they might give you whatever's on your statement and they may make it sound like that's your best option, but you have to be able to be understand the rules or have an advisor on your team that's saying, "These are the questions you need to ask prior to making that decision so you know what that value is and what the opportunity costs are." So, to to clarify here, if you was married two years, three years, you wouldn't be eligible at all. No, not from, uh, a, not from an ex-spousal benefit. From an ex-spousal. So it has, uh, somewhere in my mind, I had 18 years was in my mind somewhere, but you're saying at least 10. 10, ten years. 10 for Social Security. Yes. Uh, I say I have a Social Security question. I, you okay. just made me think All about right. it. All right. Um, I was talking to someone that I know that has been diagnosed with cancer. Um person in the 40s, and they were wondering about uh, getting a disability benefit from Social Security since there was a job loss Mm -hmm. also, but not knowing, and, and you know, my question was, well, if somebody gets a benefit when they're, you know, young or not working versus a person that has had time in, does it all depend on how much time you've put into Social Security as to your benefit, or is it a just a flat benefit for disability? There's two parts to that. First, sorry to hear about your friend and that diagnosis. That's a tough situation to go through at a young age. But uh, with Social Security disability benefits, yes, the, a part of that is using how much you have contributed to it. But the, 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 the safety net in disability is essentially they look at it and say, OK, we're going to if, if you qualify and you have one of those, you know, does, you know, if you have a, a disability that essentially doesn't allow you to work, we are going to allow you to basically elect benefits as if you were at full retirement age. The calculation and the payout basically looks at the wage earning histories that you have contributed to it so far, and they take away those actuarial reductions uh, 
So in a sense, you're getting a higher payout from the disability because essentially it wasn't your fault that you're unable to work, that you had a, a, a condition that showed up or you had an unforeseen situation. So the, the administration is trying to help you through that. And that's why they give you those higher payouts if you qualify for disability. Okay. And that, and the qualification has to do with a doctor. A doctor's, yeah. Typically it needs a physician notice. Right. They get eligible Which for that. wouldn't yep. be a problem in this case. So the, so the question was, he really has to go to determine what his benefit would be. And the Social Security office would calculate that based on his age and his time. Yep. And, and there's also a reference tool on the statement, too, that gives an estimate of what disability payments would be if you were eligible. So that's another reference tool you can look on. Oh, the yearly the, or the, the, yep, the yearly statement. Up. Yeah, the yearly statement that they send out. If you don't get a, a statement anymore, you can go online. And you can actually create a username and password and get your yearly statement right online uh, that would tell you what that payment might potentially be, too. Oh, wow. That's definitely helpful. Mm -hmm. You're listening to James Weiss and Lauren Merkel right here on 99.3 FM. The truth, if you've got a question, you can call in and ask these guys. The final phone lines are open, 515-244-0077, or you can send us a text at 515-809-0993. I think we do have a call on the line right now, Jeb. Uh, don't see the name up. Apologize for that. John. All right. Let's go ahead and go to the phones now. John? John? Yes. John, you got there, a, buddy? Yes, sir. I've got a question for you. Uh, children under 18, when a person retires, is there Social Security benefits for those children? Hi, John. Thank you very much for the call and the, and the question. The question is, is if you retire, take your Social Security benefits, and you have a child living with you in your under your household under the age of 18, are they eligible for Social Security benefits? The answer, right. to, to, the ans the answer to that question is yes. Okay. Right, and, and that and that can and that can go into one's decision who has minor children still in their household. You know, do you turn it on at 62 right away or do you wait? Well, one of one of the the benefits of turning it on early in that situation is you get those payments for um, the minor ch child for a longer period right. of time as well. Because I'll have three children under the age of 18 when I retire, and uh, so I I just figured out uh, what age to do that at 62 then. Yeah, that would all go into your calculation, and that's definitely a big incentive to turn it on sooner than later. Right. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome, John. John, thanks for calling. John called 515-244-0077. That's the number you can get into the studio. Or, of course, you can uh, let us know a question that you might have on the uh, Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0993. Um, a married couple... What... Should they factor in future health costs? How much? And I was reading on a study that said in 2011, uh, they suggested at 65, you should have $230,000 in savings to compensate for your health costs. Is that, now that's a 2011 study. It's five years later. Is that cost increased? We usually see somewhere around 225000 to 275000 but that number should probably be adjusted. The biggest question is, is what should we adjust it to? Because the healthcare marketplace is changing so dynamically over the last few years. And, and how is that going to be changed over the next few years? You know, those questions are still yet to be answered. And so that, should healthcare be a, a major p component of your plan? Yes. So the, is this still is this still all in an uproar because of the potential uh, hitting the fan in 2017 with the, what Obama shoved off the the employer mandates? Is this still all yeah, to, to be it, determined, so it, to speak? Yeah, I mean, the part of the increase of, of is part of the increase of costs is because there's a lot more people now that are covered underneath the healthcare system, and the fact that a lot more people are covered isn't necessarily a bad thing. But the fact that it's a lot less affordable for many people is is definitely a bad thing. For a married couple right now, if you go to the open market, it's going to be somewhere around twelve to sixteen hundred dollars a month. For two. For two. For two. And that's why we've seen those double-digit increases happening over the last couple of years. All right, we're coming back. It's Weiss Merkel Financial Live here in Max World on 99.3. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. 
I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershad. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fix them the problem today. If they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 438, 22 minutes before the top of the hour. Top of the hour, Hank, the Bible Answer Man. one ask hank Ask him any question you want. He's worldwide live, and he's right here exclusively on 99.3. All right, we have the uh, team of uh, Weiss Merkel Financial in here, James and Lauren. Uh, your opportunity to ask them questions about retirement. Uh, you can do it now on the radio. It costs you nothing. Or you can come to one of their Passport to Retirements, which also costs you nothing because we buy the tickets and pay for them here through the radio station. So it's at Upper Iowa University on Tuesday, July 19th, week from tomorrow, 6 to 9 o'clock at night. It's completely free financial advice information why would you not want to do that bob did it a couple of weeks ago or probably a month ago now yeah and it changed the way you're doing social security well i feel more confident in in how i should go that's for sure yeah the knowledge is the way to go you need to know and that's really what these classes are for is to give you more confidence we reference 22 percent feel very confident going into retirement that i mean we need that number increased and, and so it's not necessarily do you need to change what you were doing bob with what you were planning prior to going to that event, but do you feel better about that decision that you did make or that you're going to make? Yeah, that's and that's for sure, and that's what it does. Because going into retirement, it's complicated. It's it's complex. And so having confidence about those decisions is absolutely essential. 515-244-0077. Let's go to the phones where Chrissy from Des Moines is live in Max World with Weiss Merkel Financial. Chrissy, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Any question you have, go ahead and ask uh, James and Lauren. Okay, well, I've got a daughter. She turns 17 on Wednesday. She Congratulations. Gets oh, thank you. I'm still alive through it. <laughs> <laughs> um, she receives survivor benefits, and I was told when she turns 18, she will lose those benefits. 
But I also heard that if she's a full-time student in college, she should still receive those. Is that true or not? Uh, yes, that is true. She's a full-time uh, student through college. She should still continue to receive those benefits. Okay, because she'll graduate next year from high school, and she's planning on going on to college. So how do I keep those benefits going so we don't lose them? Yeah, it's a communication process with the Social Security Administration. So the best thing to do is one of two things, and I would probably start with the first, which is to give them a phone call and to explain to them what's going on with your situation and to see the steps necessary, the paperwork necessary to make sure that those benefits don't go away. The second one would be to visit them in person downtown Des Moines. I'd probably start with the phone call. Okay. Okay. Now, her dad was my first husband, and he had passed away, and I received survivor benefits until I remarried. Now, is there any other benefits? You know, once I marry, my benefits are, are gone then, correct? Yes. Once you're remarried, your benefits do go away. If you were to get divorced or if your current husband was to pass away, then you would have the option of either one of those benefits. So okay. you, you, those, those uh, old survivorship benefits would come back into play for you given those two events. Oh, okay. Well, that answers those questions. Thank you very much. All right, All right Chrissy. Thanks for listening. 515-244-0077 or on the Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0993. Frank? Um, without getting overly political, because it's we're not really bringing you on here to be politically uh, motivated here. Well, thank but, you. But the Affordable Health Care Act, some people say it was designed to fail on purpose so that maybe single payer could be ushered in. Are you armed with advice either way this health care system goes? Here's what I can tell you, is that there's good and bad to everything. The good the good about the current system is everybody's covered. And from a compassionate standpoint, it's it's nice to know that everybody is covered. The bad is it is more expensive. And so that from that standpoint, less people can afford a, a better quality plan. Now, going forward, we have no idea what's going to take place. Will it evolve to a single-payer single system? Some believe so. Will it uh, evolve into some other type of system? Some believe so. Some hope so. Um, but in the retirement planning process, we cannot accurately predict everything, whether it's health care, the stock market, taxation, but we can account for different variations of what we anticipate. Just like the, the, the current Social Security or the recent Social Security changes, you know, they were talking about those types of changes for some time. We couldn't accurately predict what Congress right. is going to do. They're so unpredictable. But we could uh, make adjustments on, on the fly because plans were already in place, and it's just a quick little tweak. You know, sim very similar with the health care law changes. We don't know what's going to take place down the road, but we can certainly plan for a couple variations. If you had to hedge your bet, would you say it would be probably more working around the edges of that system, or do you think it, it will end up going to single payer? If I had to hedge my bet, <laughs> that, that's a tough one. You know, I think that... Um, the, this country seems to be on a certain trajectory, right? And if, if we end up single payer, there's going to be some benefits to that. There's going to be some disadvantages to that. If we don't go single, single payer, there's going to be some good and bad to that as well. And can you define single payer? The single payer system I means it's government run healthcare system where the benefits are provided directly from, from the, or managed directly by the government. So that would basically put all insurance, the whole in insurance industry out of business in healthcare, right? And we've already seen the health healthcare insurance industry consolidate quite a bit. That consolidation process will probably continue unless there's some major changes. Um, and if it went single payer, then it, it would either be the government working uh, jointly with one or two major insurers or they would, they would go away. Oh. What is that going to do to Des Moines? <laughs> right. I mean, that's our that's yeah. our industry, Bread right? Butter. Yeah, we're and, and the insurance capital of the world. And that's why we've, uh, from a health care standpoint, there are less insurers out there. Less less insurers. I mean, there's a lot of insurance companies that consolidated to just doing life or other types of insurance, property and casualty, property and casualty, and got out of the health care business because it's so unpredictable. Let me ask you kind of an amusing question. Uh, it's not political, is it? No, not political. You, you sure? Yes. Because you snuck one in that last time, and I saw you. Your big old nose got under the tent, and <laughs> you were looking around. Now you're going to back out, but go ahead. Long time ago on WHO, I heard someone give someone advice that called up and asked this kind of question. 
and their response was this if if you if you wait till you can afford to have kids you'll never have kids so let me kind of spin a funny question off on retirement if you can really afford to retire will you ever retire i think you will absolutely i mean really i think the the, the number of retire I, I think the idea of retirement really boils down to what we were talking about earlier. Do you have the confidence to make that transition? I mean, if you think about retirement and being unemployed for 20 or 30 years without any paychecks, and you have done very little retirement planning, you're probably going to be scared enough not to retire. You're going to continue working. Well, let me rephrase the question because I don't know if, if, I, if I hit the question exactly right. What percentage of people end up retiring that really can't afford to retire well that i think there's more i think that i if i had to take a guess i would say that for over 40 percent of people are forced into retirement that's not sustainable it's not sustainable that they're living on a fixed social security income only uh they don't have any 401k they have very little in savings and they're going to be on that fixed income the rest of their life with very little options to put themselves in a better situation. And we see that a lot. 515-244-0077. Lauren, you said that maybe we go to a single payer system. Does that mean that health care is free and it's paid for by taxes? Or am I still taking... Twelve eighteen hundred dollars a month from my wife and I. There's multiple variations, but I think what most people think of, what they think of when they think of a single payer system, is that it comes out of the taxes. Instead of instead of coming directly from your wallet, it comes out of taxation. Well, but where does so the, so is it free now? I mean, no, I mean we're going to get taxed some way or another. That's right. All right, uh, Weiss, Merkel, uh, they're here. They're with us every couple weeks. Uh, You've got questions. They've got answers. Uh, 515-244-0077. And uh, also at the Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0993. They've got their absolutely complimentary passport to retirement. That's coming up on Tuesday, July 19th from 6 to 9 o'clock. And it's absolutely free. Three hours of you being able to ask questions, get your uh, answers, uh, or get your questions answered by two experts face to face, and uh, they're just trying to build trust with you. You know, they just want you to know these are two good guys uh, that you can trust with your retirement, uh, and you'll know that when you go meet them for sure. If not, just listening to them. All right, we're coming back live here on the Truth. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coach with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 
It's 10 minutes before 5 o'clock, 4.50 in the afternoon on the 11th day of July in the Lord's year 2016. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and uh, we want to thank you for listening today. We've got just a, a, sh- a few uh, short minutes, and uh, you can still call in at 515-244-0077 and ask questions. Uh, you can still text in for a few more minutes at 515-809-0993, uh, or you can uh, show up at the Upper Iowa University on Tuesday, July 19th from 6 to 9 o'clock and go to the uh, Weiss Merkel Passport to Retirement. It's free. It's free financial advice from people who you can learn to trust. And if you've got any questions about this in your retirement, then this would be a good place for you to go and a good place for you to show up. Now, James, you said something earlier. At age 59 and a half, I can take over the control of my 401k rather than my employer telling me who's going to control it? Absolutely. This is one of those little tidbit of secrets that are out there that people are not aware of, that at age 59 and a half, most employers now, there are a few that are out there that haven't made this provision, but most employers have created what, a, what it's a provision within their code that says in-service distribution is what the technical term that's inside there. And that in-service distribution basically says, even if I'm still working for that employer and I want to take back that control, I can move that into my name and into my control. There's no tax consequences to do this. This is literally just saying, hey, I don't want to pay the high fees of my 401k. I'm going to move that money into my name and I can invest it in anything else. Here's the other cool thing you get to do is you keep your 401k open. So it's not closing out your 401k. You keep the employer matched so you can still make contributions right out of your W-2s. You still get the free money from the employer, which is the great thing of employer plans is they give you that free money. You got to take that. When you get free money, take it. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to leave that money where there's high fees, limited investment options. You want to sweep that into your name and into your control. Then you can invest it in anything you want and keep your 401k going at the same time. And what I heard you say earlier, what I thought I heard you say earlier was that the closer you get to retirement date, the more conservative you should be. Typically, we want to dial that that roller coaster ride out of it. Okay. So we don't want to see the big fluctuations, and we call it low volatility investing. And that's where we really want to try and make sure that instead of having this big fluctuations where we have 2008 and it, you know, 100,000 goes to 60,000, and then we spend the next five years trying to get back to 100,000, we want to smooth that out so that we're just hitting singles and doubles and not trying to swing for the fences for home runs anymore. If you're 20 and 30 years old, great, swing for the fences. But when you're five or 10 years within retirement, let's take some of that volatility out. That'll also help you sleep better at night too, not seeing these big fluctuations thinking, oh my goodness, I'm not going to retire for 10 more years if I go through this again. What, what, what's the, um, uh, is there a, uh, what's the most conservative way to go in, with, with your 401k? The most inside the 401k, the most conservative way to go right now is stable value or money market inside the 401k. That's again one of those limitations inside the employer plans because they only give you a few choices in an IRA. Man, that's where it opens up the universe. You could have over 500 different types of conservative investments uh, within that within that approach. So that's how you really open up the opportunity to take the you know basically get off the roller coaster ride, still get a you know decent rate of return, singles and doubles, without taking that big risk of well, if another 2008 shows up, here we go again for that ride. All right, 515-244-0077. That's the number you can call if you want your voice heard. Also, you can go to the Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0993. Frank? Going back to people who kind of uh, want to shove off potential death to the last second, you know, and, and you're rolling along and you're working and you're kind of burying your head in the sand that one of you could die, kick the bucket. How important is it for the earner you know the main the main earner to name his beneficiaries before he kicks the bucket i mean does that does that leave a lot of problems for the for the widow let, let me give you an example we met a gentleman about 5 months ago probably and his spouse had two 401k plans between the two of them it equated to a, just over 1 million dollars 
Now, she did not uh, do the beneficiary designation appropriately. She passed, and he had been working at that time when we met him for the last three months to gain access to this money. All she had to do is appropriately name that beneficiary, and that money was his directly in his own account. No taxes, doesn't have to go through probate, doesn't have to fight the last three months to gain access to this money. So that the quick answer to your question is absolutely yes. So you obviously counsel people on that, and, and how many people really get that done before they go? Well, we see quite a bit of mistakes around that, and that's why at that university class, as well as a lot of our uh, individual sessions, we talk about the beneficiary. We do a beneficiary review to make sure that the beneficiaries are right, because it's easy while you're alive. It's extremely difficult and costly right. once you pass. And, and you bring up a good point that, you know, what we've seen with the, what we were talking about with those in-service distributions, every time the employer transfers that plan, what we're seeing now is that they're not carrying over that beneficiary information. So that's another good reason that you want to do a, another double check to make sure that if even if you decide to stay in that employer's plan, that they updated those beneficiaries because once you pass away, we can't fix it. There's no do-overs. Yeah. It's going to the estate planning and they have to go through the probate process we can't we can't make adjustments after date of death so if you really care about your mate and how they're surviving after your death you want to make sure that's top on your list to get done yeah your mate or your kids or the charities that you wanted to go to i mean this is stuff you have to do while you're alive because once you're gone it's too late and if you do it while you know at that class we give an example of how how um, one couple turns a five hundred and twenty five thousand dollar ira into a $4.5 million family legacy. Wow. And it's due to proper titling of the accounts and a proper distribution execution strategy. But if you, do, if you don't do it right, all that's gone. All right. It's the Passport to Retirement. It's coming up on Tuesday, July 19th from 6 to 9 o'clock. It's only one night during the summer, two, uh, three hours rather than two. It's at Upper Iowa University at 50th and Westtown Parkway in West Des Moines. Uh, this is complimentary, free, no charge. I don't know what you want to say, but you get to sit in front of these two brainiacs and ask them any question, any concern, any condition, anything you've got. You may have heard something on this program today and you went, huh? I didn't know at 59 and a half I can take over my own 401k and opera. I didn't know that. Well, guess what else you don't know? That's why you need to go to this thing. Upper Iowa University, that's the building. 50th and Westtown Parkway. That's the address. It's called Passport to Retirement from Weiss Merkel Financial. And all you need to do is give them a call and they'll reserve your space today. 278 4110. That's 278 4110. Call Weiss Merkel Financial today or email them at info at weissmerkelfinancial.com and if you want to check them out online it's wmrsvp.com i'm j michael mccoy if i haven't told you lately thanks for listening i love this job i couldn't do it without you we'll see you tomorrow and until then remember forgive because as you forgive you will be forgiven <laughs>